So what was it about Emma's uh, novel that really appealed to you and wanted you to t retell this story on the, on the big screen? Well, I, I loved the novel since the moment I read it. Uh, I think I really connected with the two women at the center of the story. Um, Lip, you know, the character played by Florence Pugh, and the young girl, um, Anna, played by Keila, Lord Cassidy. Um, I found that relationship to be really unique, you know, a sort of like transgenerational sorority uh, that is rarely seen on film. And, um, and also I thought it was a great opportunity to, to explore how belief systems collide. You know, because um, Liv is a, is a nurse, is a, she's a scientist um, and uh, a rationalist. And uh, she arrives to this community uh, where there is a lot of uh, religious fervor, um, extreme uh, religious fervor. And um, many of the people that are there, of the committee that summons her, um, seem to have found the truth and are not willing to move from that position. Um, which is kind of like, it is the definition of fan fanaticism. And, um, and Lib, because of her, you know, scientifically minded uh, approach, she's more elastic. Um, so I thought it was really interesting to explore how this dyna power dynamics um, operate. And I really, really loved Lib's journey. The fact that she mm, goes from being completely rational um, trying to connect the dots, trying to understand, to uncover the hoax, if there's any. Um, and then by the time she understands the mechanics of how the girl is being kept alive, um, the film also reveals the why you know, the girl is doing it, the sacrifice. And the reasons are so devastating that from that point on, um, her challenge becomes moral, a moral dilemma. And then she has to respond um, elastically uh, because she can't do that because she's not fixated in one position and in order to do that she transcends reason uh, and does uh, an act that is um, in order to save the girl she ends up doing quite extreme things um, that could be defined as irrational um, but maybe they are made out of you know for, for the love of the girl and I thought that that journey was really an interesting one to explore in, in, as a, through a film. I mean, you mentioned that kind of balance between the kind of scientific mind and the kind of religious one. And I thought what was really interesting here is that you have to be critical of the, the fanaticism and the, and the religious side to it because obviously it's harming a young girl's health. Yeah. But at the same time, I thought you were very sort of careful and not, it always felt respectful. You never looked down on the family for their belief. Was that very important for you that even though you have, this film does come at, at it with a potentially sort of critical eye of some of the behavior of some of the characters, at the same time, it does feel like you, yeah, it never sort of, um, it's never sort of patronizing towards their, the way the, the family well, right. and, the, and their beliefs, I suppose. Right, I mean, thank you. Um, yeah, I need, I need to understand each character and find a, a way to defend them, you know? And I think um, I, it's not at all a film against religion. It's a film against, I think, maybe um, intellectual rigidity, you know? And, uh, and, and people that claim to have found the truth and are imposing that upon others and are willing to bend reality in order to fix what they, what they need, what they believe. And that's something that um, I think it's concerning and, um, and that is something that probably um, makes the film a film about today. And I was interested, I mean, that, the, the film starts off in a very unique way. I mean, that breaking of the kind of fourth wall, was that mm. something that was always in the script from the offset? Or was that something that came to you a bit later on? No, no, the, 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 I call it the, the little framing, mm. you know, uh, um, but that came um, kind of like in the, at the end of the writing process. Because it's a, it's a film that explores how we believe and the mechanisms of fiction, the power of storytelling and fiction, fictions that we tell ourselves, that we co-create and tell each other. Um, I really wanted for the film itself as a fictional construct to be very openly, um, you know, to be open in, 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 with the fact that it um, 
It's saying to the viewer, you will be exposed to the power of fiction. Uh, be alert, you know, because you will see characters that are deeply believing in their stories. Um, and that will have serious implications. Um, what are you believing in at the moment? Um, are you, you know, in a fixated position or do you have a more elastic approach to what you believe and you are willing or prepared to adapt and change according to what life um, presents in front of you, you know? And I thought it definitely felt very distinct. I think you could tell it was one of your films. I think it had your kind of, your sort of like tonality to it and your touch. And I was thinking, because on this corridor just today, we've got Inaritu's here, we've got Noah Baumbach. And it feels like Netflix at the moment is a real director's platform. It feels like the, the filmmakers have been given this license to, to really be, have creative control over their projects. Can I, just, I wanted to ask you just about your experience working on this and if it, if it feels like it's a very good environment to, to create a movie. I mean, it's been great to work with Netflix. Um, the, they were very, you know, supportive um, since the beginning. And they were, they were willing to support the film um, so we could make the film like we wanted to. The film has a certain um, visual sophistication or even only because of Ari Wagner's work, uh, splendor. And that requires... Um, you know, resources and support, and 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 in that sense, it's, it's been it's been really uh, a, a great experience. Yeah. And how, what did you make of shooting in in Ireland? How was it? Did you, did, was it had you been there much before getting involved? In well, I, I, I've been to Ireland like a couple of times. I had been to Ireland a couple of times before shooting, but uh, yeah, I did spend a good six months there um, during COVID. It was very special, but um, I loved the people. And uh, it, it's, it was a really wonderful film crew. So I really enjoyed the experience. Yeah. Did you have any Tato's, those crisps? I did, I did, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are iconic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tato's. Well, thank you so much for your time today, especially. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.